Hello, hello ladies and children. In this video, we are going to explore the code commit feature of AWS. Actually, why? I don't know why they, they're they creating this. Oh, we already have GitHub, so let's just see. Okay, so let's create a, a, a new repo. So this will be an Angular S3 AWS our code commit. Can we do that? Angular S3 code commit. <sighs> Enable Amazon Code Guru review. No. Great. <clears throat> So we have created, have we created it already? All right, so this, are, this is where your codes will be located. And then the prerequisite, you must use a Git client that supports Git version. So what is our Git version as of the moment? Uh, Git, can we do the Git version? 2.34. So 1.7.9 or latest to connect to AWS code to Metro repository. If you do not have a Git client, you can install one from Git downloads. You must have an AWS code commit manage policy attached to your AWS user belong to a code star project team. So if you, you you must have an AWS code commit manage policy attached to your AWS, what's that? To, or have the equivalent permission. <clears throat> Project team or have the equivalent permission. Learn how to create and manage an AM for accessing yeah, I didn't know that have this kind of um, burden. The simplest way to set up connections to AWS code commit repositories is to configure get credentials for code commit in the IAM console and then use those credentials for HTTPS connections. You can also use this same credentials with any third party tools or identity or integrated development environment to support HTTPS authentication using a static username and password. Uh, we want to use the SSH, so are we going to have any problem with that? Um, set up the AWS CLI credential helper. Set up your connection to AWS code commit repositories using the credential helper included in the AWS CLI. This is the only connection method for AWS code commit repositories that do not require an IAM user. So it is the only method that supports root access, federated access, and temporary credentials. Additional details. You can find more detailed instruction in the documentation. What? Uh, okay, so this means that I need to use an IEM user. Yeah. So let's go, let's pause this one first and let's, I'm going to set up so that I can have an SSH. Uh, I'll just, I'll just continue with this one and then I'll just cut. The the screens that I'm not I will not share with you guys. So for the user, I'm going to create an IEM user Vlad X to uh code like that. Provide user access to a console. No, yeah. Then I want. I want to create an IEM user. So auto generate password, custom password. Is
So I'm creating a user, so this is its console. And then so password right, uh, right so it turns uh, so we have Vlad co Vlad X2 code <clears throat> so we're going to add a permissions let me add attach policy code star. Is there like a code star? Mm -hmm. All right. So those were attached to that to that user. So now we want then log in, log back in. Then we're going to <clears throat> so now we are logged in as a coder and then do we have a code commit? Yeah we do have a code commit and do you have a repository? Yeah, we have access to the repository that we that the other Vlad has created. So this is its SSH. Go to Linux. So we can get clone this one. Uh, there's a lot of steps, man. I'm sleepy. I'll just continue with this one later. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks. Bye.